My friends, what if I told you that there is a military unit that completely ignored the woke tsunami and instead doubled down on tradition and more surprising, that is completely unapologetic of its military past. To the extent where its veterans write books titled I don't regret anything regarding their campaigns in Indochina and North Africa. It's very offensive and you have to apologize for all that. No, my glorious past. Actually, I will write many songs about it. We talked already a lot about it, but most countries in the West face major recruitment problems for the military. More often than not because they're trying super hard to change its current composition to fit modern audiences. We saw how the US Army can't even fill up its ranks despite lowering fitness standards to a minimum and offering thirty to $40,000 enlistment bonuses to 18-year-olds. But another country facing such problem is Canada. One in 10 positions in the regular forces is left vacant. So what's the solution according to the Canadian general staff? More diversity, yeah! Cultural change is the key, aka more females in the military, especially in command positions. Because there are too many white men in the Canadian army. Others believe that widespread systemic racism in the Canadian military is repulsing new recruits. Now despite all these efforts to reach out to a bigger recruitment pool, in 2023, the Department of National Defense tells CTV News that the Canadian Armed Forces is facing a shortage of 16,000 members. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Atlantic, there is a military unit that completely rejects the postmodern woke BS, is the French Foreign Legion, and they're facing a recruitment overload. Legionnaires don't waste time with equal opportunity training or talks about white privilege. Their only privilege is the following. Now what blows my mind is that they managed to achieve this without massive ad recruitment campaigns, without touring high schools or college campuses, without offering 50k enlistment bonuses, or without lowering their fitness standards. The French Foreign Legion is clear. They never try to push for enlistment because it's the recruits' duty to convince themselves. People don't join because of the good pay, the job they'll get after the army, or because they'll get free college tuition. And that's another reason why the French Foreign Legion is famous. Most candidates that go there expect to go to combat. The Foreign Legion is part of every French military campaign. As a matter of fact, it's the Foreign Legion's military history, it's many battles, that is the recruitment pitch. And those that will end up wounded in battle will have the honor to be awarded French citizenship for the blood lost in combat. Still, what is this mysterious aura, sometimes romantic, that attracts thousands of men from all over the world? that are ready to die for a foreign country they've never been to. And before we continue, a quick word from today's sponsor. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. A few weeks ago, a company reached out to me and I was that close to reply to their email when I noticed some red flags. They asked me to download some zip file. That was so strange, I was like, no way. And then I further inspected the email and then noticed it wasn't a real email from the actual company. This is why I'm super excited to partner with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is an easy to use app that includes everything you need to stay safe online. Aura protects you from scammers and hackers by scanning the dark web, where criminals sell stolen information, looking for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers. It alerts you fast if it finds anything. They help you fight back against those annoying websites that make your personal information public by automatically requesting removal of your info. This helps reduce robocalls. Aura gives you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, like if someone was opening a loan or credit card in your name. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted. And they protect your devices from viruses, malware, spyware, and more, so the bad guys can't break in and their password manager lets you store and access your online password securely and conveniently. 
With Aura, you don't need seven different apps, but just one. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with my link. You will be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. Go to Aura.com slash HistoryLegends to start your free trial. Or just click the link in the description below or scan this QR code. Hi and welcome to History Legends. Thank you to everyone that has already supported the channel and welcome to the headquarters. One of their most popular videos on YouTube is the anthem of the Foreign Legion. 10 million views, an anthem called Blood Sausage. And long story short, the lyrics can be summarized as Snitches get stitches, or rather it mocks the Belgians for not participating in a battle. And because of that, they say that the Belgians will shoot you in the ass. Actually, the closest thing to a recruitment ad was this two hour long documentary titled Foreign Legion and Inhumane Recruitment. 30 million views in five years. 30 million views. That's more than all US military recruitment ads on YouTube together. There's also this other video that went viral. 2 million views in 2 years. It's a step-by-step -step guide with tips and tricks on how to enlist in the French Foreign Legion. And the main character of the video is Major Gerald, one of the icons of the Foreign Legion that signed up around 30 years ago. Every year, roughly 7,000 to 8,000 candidates from all over the world arrive at the gates of one of the Legion's pre-selection recruitment centers. And recruiters don't F around. When you arrive, you have to face your first challenge, the chocolate bar, aka pull-ups. Usually, you only have to complete four dead hang pull-ups. But in reality, it depends on the corporal chef's mood. Five, six, seven. So that's the first round of elimination, and it's not even part of the pre-selection process. If you fail to complete at least four pull-ups, you can pack up your bags, turn around, and go home. In 2018, of the 8,000 candidates, only 1,200 were selected for the four-month basic training in Castelnaudary, where they will then be incorporated in one of the 11 regiments of the Foreign Legion. The Legion is also famous for not having any diversity quotas. They're very pragmatic because the recruitment pool varies depending on world events. After the Russian Civil War, many white Russians enlisted in the French Foreign Legion. The former Cossacks formed the core of the 1st Cavalry Regiment of the Foreign Legion. During World War II, Spanish Republicans represented almost 1 in 3 Legionnaires, as well as Poles and Czechs. And since the 1990s, many from Eastern Europe and the former USSR. And nowadays, its composition changed once again. These days, 30% of the recruits were Westerners, 28% Slavs, 12% Africans like Madagascar, 13% Asians, mainly from Nepal, and 13% South Americans, namely Brazilians and Colombians. The foreigners represent 90% of the foreign legion. 11% of the legionnaires are French-speaking, mostly from France. Yes, because someone from France can indeed enlist in the foreign legion. But he will officially be listed as a foreigner from a French-speaking country like Belgium, Switzerland, or Canada. The Legion will teach French using its homemade and very famous white kepi method. They will teach you French. And every day you are there, you will learn three words. Three words. Every day. For that you are able to understand and can write and read these words, is your binom, and your binom most of the time is a Gaulois, maybe a Francophone. They established that they need at least 10% Francophones within their ranks. They will act like French language tutors for the foreigners. They do take lessons in classrooms, but it's this daily and constant repetition of orders, movements, and songs that teaches them the language and the culture. In the end, it's this fast-paced teaching of the French language that turns these individuals into brothers in arms. That is done to mold the recruits that come from all over the world into one cohesive military force. Because they simply could have used English since it's the international language, it would have made things much easier. But no, they stuck to tradition. Let me know in the comment section why you joined the French Foreign Legion. But generally speaking, what it offers to its troops is the possibility of a second chance in life, a new start by allowing to erase mistakes from the past. The French Foreign Legion's motto is Legio Patria Nostra. 
Legio Patria Nostra. Literally, Legion, our homeland. If a legionnaire is ready to die, it's first and foremost for his comrades, for the Legion, and only after that for France. And they literally say this in the anthem of the Foreign Legion. <laughs> The passport you held walking through these gates becomes irrelevant because now you have a new family, a new homeland. In regards to today's events, if a Russian and a Ukrainian legionnaire are in the same squad, they're expected to disregard anything happening outside. The legion is their new family, their brothers in arms. And this is Article 2 of the Legion's Code of Honor. Every legionnaire is your brother in arms. It does not matter which nationality, what race or what religion your brother is. You show him solidarity, which is needed to unite members of the same family. And what's interesting is that they literally say brothers in arms, not siblings in arms, brothers. Facing work hordes on all sides, the Legion dug in. They only recruit males between 17 and a half and 39 and a half years old. Females are not officially forbidden, but they don't really make it through pre-selection. Oh my God, so you're telling me girls can't join? No. Okay, then I self-identify as a... Now it happens that some female officers of the French army will be present in the Legion, but they're not allowed in combat positions. Women will wear the same green beret as everyone else, but they're not allowed to wear the traditional uniform of the Legion. White kepi, red and green, shoulder pads and the blue belt. And like this ancient relic, the Foreign Legion is also clear that there will be no special treatment within its ranks. It's not a British Airways flight. There will be no special meals and no special religious holidays. And this is what legionnaires write online. F you and your gluten-free vegan diet. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. We have to understand that at its core, the French Foreign Legion's cultural heritage is Catholic. And Catholic rites like Easter and Christmas will be celebrated by all legionnaires. For Christmas, and they literally say Christmas, not holiday season. That already seen as extreme. Officers will spend Christmas Eve with their men. This is their family. And sometimes legionnaires will all have to build a Christmas crib. And it happens that a Muslim soldier will hold baby Jesus. The father figure is also very important in the legion. And not parent figure. The overall commander of the Legion is often nicknamed Father Legion, and during Christmas celebrations he tours all the regiments of the Legion. Another of the sayings that is often used by the troops is Command as Father, Obey as Son. <laughs> the Norwegians must be sweating! Many people don't know this, but every of the regiments has a saint. Saint Anthony is the overall saint patron of the Foreign Legion, celebrated on the 17th of January, the patron of the first REC. Saint George, patron of the cavalry. Saint Michael is the patron of the paratroopers, who according to the legend appeared from the sky in the cathedral of Hanoi in June 1948. The most important thing that any new legionnaires learns is that he bears the weight of a long line of forefathers. Article 6. The mission is sacred. You execute it till it's done, and if needed, during operations at the risk of your life. The theme of death is constantly present in the Legion. Death is literally written in their contract. A commander of the Legion, whose name I will not repeat, said in 1884, Legionnaires, you soldiers are meant to die, and will send you where people die. In the last century, the bloodiest campaigns for them was number one in the China, with over 10,000 KIA. Second place, World War II, with 9,000. Bronze medal, World War I, 6,000 death. And runners up, the Algerian War, with 2,000 KIA. These four wars account for 70% of all the fallen soldiers of the FFL. Article 6, the mission, is best exemplified by an anonymous skirmish that took place during the French expedition in Mexico. Every year on April 30th, the French Foreign Legion celebrates its most important holiday, Cameron Day. It commemorates a battle that took place on the 30th of April, 1863. A company of 62 men of the Foreign Legion was sent on a scouting mission to protect the flanks of a very important supply convoy. 2,000 Mexicans ambushed the legionnaires who quickly regrouped in an abandoned farm. Under the burning Mexican sun, they fought for hours until they were overwhelmed. 
At the end of the day, the legionnaires had no more water and ran out of ammo. The Mexicans summoned the six survivors to surrender, but instead they fixed bayonets, fired one last volley and charged into the crowd of sombreros, until they all fell to the ground. However, these men accomplished their mission. The skirmish allowed the supply convoy to reach the French army that was besieging the town of Puebla, which fell two weeks later. This remembrance ceremony is held at Aubagne. There is a big parade, and the wooden prosthetic hand of the commander at Cameron, Captain Jean d'Anjou, is presented to the public. Although less religious on Cameron Day, every regiment also hosts a beauty pageant to select its yearly Miss White Kepi. The spirit of this battle is so important that it led to an expression, faire Cameron, to do Cameron, or to stand your ground and fight until the end. Faire Cameron for a legionnaire today is to accept an order without flinching, without emotion or interpretation, and with full confidence in the senior officer. Faire Cameron is an ode to the legion. So all legionnaires naturally feels a part of this common heritage. And since then, the legionnaires have pulled countless Cameron. The most famous ones are Tu Yen Kuang in 1885 against the Chinese, and Bear Kame in 1942 against the Germans. There's another famous poem about death written by Captain de Borelli, who took part in that last stand at Tuen Kong, where two companies of the Foreign Legion, supported by local troops and French Marines, repelled the assault of 12,000 Chinese of the Black Flag Army. De Borelli wrote, To my men that are dead. He says the poem is dedicated to an Alsatian volunteer named Thibault Treibler, who gave up his life to save his captain on March 3rd, 1885. And he ends the poem by saying the following, Soldiers, who peacefully lie in distant lands, I feel guilty for all the blood shed. But just tell yourself, this is our captain that remembers all of us and who counts his fallen. As you can imagine, the Legion is unapologetically proud of the accomplishments of its predecessors. When the War Museum in Paris simply erased the battles fought during France's colonial past, as if it never happened, the French Foreign Legion was born during this time, during the conquest of Algeria and became famous because of its heavy fighting in distant lands across Asia and Africa. For example, every regimental flag of the French Foreign Legion embroidered with golden letters the names of glorious, victorious battles and campaigns. For example, here's the flag of the 1st Foreign Regiment and here's the flag of the 1st Cavalry Regiment. Let's just say this, we wouldn't see this in the German Bundeswehr. Imagine the flag of the 1st Panzer Division. You're never gonna see this. Another deep-rooted tradition of the Legion is its numerous marching songs. We talked about their anthem at the beginning of the video, but many of the most popular ones are related to Germans. You see, since its beginning in 1831, the French Foreign Legion always had a big German contingent. They made up three out of its seven battalions. However, the turning point happened during World War II. Hundreds of thousands of Germans and Austrians were held in prison camps, sometimes in horrible conditions. Meanwhile, France needed troops to reconquer its colony of Indochina and toward POW camps for recruits. In the end, of the 70,000 legionnaires that fought in Indochina from 1945 to 1954, Roughly 30,000 Germans enlisted in the Foreign Legion. They were now fighting side by side with their former enemies. But some claim it was actually much higher. Because if we include all Germanic recruits, so Germans, but also Austrians, Belgians and Dutch, perhaps even some Scandinavians. There are many reports that in Indochina, many of the battalions had 50 to 80% Germanic recruits. And let's just say that in times of war, the Legion was less picky with its recruitment process, especially regarding political ideology. Was this tattooist, I'm just a great fan of Norse mythology. And this bullet wound, a oh, hunting accident. Okay, from this point forward, we are silent. Not quiet. Silent. This massive German component brought years of valuable military experience to the Legion. Many former German veterans of the Luftwaffe formed the core of the 1st and 2nd Foreign Paratrooper Regiments, and the ones that served in Panzer Divisions joined the 1st Cavalry Regiment. But these men also brought all their German military tradition with them, and their war songs that they loved to sing throughout the war. So here's a list that you can listen to in your free time. But I mean, a lot of the most popular songs of the French Foreign Legion are literally copy-paste 
from the Germans, just with different lyrics. Yeah, because any mentions to our boy H-Man, uh, no, no. And there's even one song, Westerwald, that they, they not even bother to translate. <laughs> they literally kept the same lyrics. In German. But you see, it would have been very easy and understandable for the Legion to erase and modify this past. Like in the US, where army bases named after Confederate generals were renamed. But the Foreign Legion said no. They embraced their past and preserved the memory of all the men that fought within the ranks. Whoever they were and whatever political ideology they had before enlisting. And this can be represented in the Legion's war memorial that is motionless and deeply rooted in the ground. And perhaps it is this brotherhood, this respect of traditions, that is cherished and recognized by men from all over the world. That's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, make sure to check out my Patreon or PayPal. The links are in the description below.